The lesson from the story of Esau in the Bible is one interesting and important lesson. There has been a lot of commentary on the story of Esau, especially when the question is asked, why was Esau aided by God? There is a scripture in the Bible that has sparked this argument about the sovereignty of God. There have been various schools concerning this question. Some say that God decided to aid Esau and others say that it was because it was spoken before and by God that Esau was predestined to be the servant of Jacob. So far, from that narrative, God was taking the sides with Jacob. The burden of the word of Lord to Israel by Malachi I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. Malachi chapter 1 verse 1 to 3a This is one of the most important phrases in the Bible. God mentions Jacob and Esau, two brothers, sons of Isaac. God's feeling for those two brothers seem vastly different. A school of thought argues that God did not eat Esau and this argument is denoted by a Hebrew word which means to prefer. But that does not cut it. Then, why will God prefer Jacob to Esau? Because when Rebekah was pregnant with this baby in her womb, she prayed to God and asked, Why is my stomach in? God said, The elder shall serve the younger. So that was prophesied before they were born into the world. Jacob was chosen and preferred not because of his works, but because of God's grace. We see that from Romans chapter 9 verse 16. Romans chapter 9 verse 16 says, So then, God's choice is not dependent on human will, nor human effort, the totality of human striving, but on God who shows mercy to whomever he chooses. It is his sovereignty, God's gift. God's sovereignty doesn't cancel the place of free will and choice. There is a place of God's foresight into the future which is not in the place for mere man to understand because if we can understand all that God does, then we have taken his place. The Apostle Paul says it's like this, who is a man that he should question God? In the same chapter, the question was answered clearly in Hebrews chapter 12, why God hated Esau and loved Jacob. God saw ahead of time Esau's attitude. There was an attitude he had that made God hate him. However, from human reasoning, it was Jacob that seems to have done something wrong, but Evan endorsed them. Why? Because of what Hebrews chapter 12 says. Hebrews 12 verse 15 to 17, looking diligently, lest any man fails of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many are defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that when he would have inherited the blessing, it was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. From here, we see why Esau was rejected by God. It was because Esau was a profane person and the fornicator. Fornication and profanity in this sense doesn't mean the physical imagination of profanity and fornication. The writer is writing an Hebraism expression. It later explains it, it says, Esau sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. This was the landmark of Esau's story. Literally, this was a summary of the story about Esau. He sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. What is the birthright? The birthright are the rights and privileges of the lineage of Abraham. This started from Enoch which was made of three substances, which was the firstborn blessing, which is double the inheritance of other children from the same father. The second was the priesthood and the third was the kingship. So, if you are in this lineage, the firstborn child is the one entitled to this birthright according to the culture. It lived from Enoch to Abraham to Isaac and then to Esau, who is supposed to be the rightful carrier of the birthright. Enoch in the book of Joshua was said to be a king and priest, that men all over the world will make their pilgrimage 
to come and listen to this great man. Enoch was said to come out once a year, then it increased to once a month, and then once a week, until it was not because God took him. This man too was sacred, and he passed from generation as the birthright of the firstborn child, and this was the very thing that Esau sowed for one morsel of perishable meat. It was not even his actions or what he did that broke God's heart. It was what he said at that moment that only showed what Esau never had value for his generational mantle. He took it with levity. Genesis 25 He had the God to say about his birthright. What is this birthright to me? This was the very thing that made Abraham a king that people envied. It was the very thing that when Abraham went to Gera and lied concerning his wife, God had to stand by him even when he was wrong because he was a bearer of the birthright. The writer of Hebrews referred to Esau as a profane godless person. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16 Before their birth, God knew that Esau's descendant would become enemies of Israel for generations to come and he knew Jacob was a man of integrity. He had preordained that Jacob would be in the lineage of Jesus. God was pissed. What Jacob did was endorsed by God because he knew the weight of this birthright and the value of it. That is how it passed on to him. Esau was a hunter, always in the field, while Jacob was always at home with his mother. So I guess he was always being told by his parents about his birthright. Actually, what Esau was doing unknowingly was he was rejecting the lineage of the Messiah. He wanted the blessing, but he did not want to suffer the reproach of Christ. Esau was the kind of brother that was always authoritative. That was why the writer of Hebrews says that look diligently lest anyone falls of the grace of Christ. This means the grace of God was given to Esau to choose so he could be permanently selected into the lineage.